Steelers, Patriots, New England. Wins the toss, takes the football. Yes, very familiar territory for these franchises. Each having won eight conference titles, which is also shared, by the way, the record with Dallas and Denver. Again, one of them will become the first to go to a ninth. This game being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Chris Boswell, who scored all the points for the Steelers in the win down at Arrowhead last Sunday, puts it on a tee, and it's been just like this, Bill, since, uh, well, we showed up here over four hours ago. It was misting. It hasn't stopped. In the low 40s, we're underway. Deion Lewis is back deep. And he's not going to have a chance to return that. Touchback, Tom Brady comes out. Once again, 33rd postseason appearance. 11th conference championship game. An amazing total, most all time. Six and four in this spot, including wins against the Steelers twice in the championship game. 01 and 04 seasons. Solder on that left side. He's going to have to hold off the likes of James Harrison tonight. And Martellus Bennett, we highlight him because Gronkowski's been a Steeler killer over the last two seasons. Game one last year and the game earlier this year. He had four touchdowns over the last two games, but of course he's out for the season. Out of the gun to start it. Brady with time. Fires it in there and it is caught by Bennett for a gain of 12. Well, they did something unusual tonight. The Patriots decide they win the coin toss, they take the football. And why we talked about all the great numbers that Tom Brady's put up against this Pittsburgh defense. They play zone. They throw a lot of short passes, New England, and they have great success spreading this team out. And they go five wides here on the second snap. And again, well protected to Edelman. Edelman weaves past the defender, and he's into Pittsburgh territory, still on his feet, keeping his balance down to the 23 before he's thrown down by Mitchell. Going across the field, Edelman, and all they talk about, we've, we've said it already, Kent must tackle at the receiver, catches the ball, yards after catch. New England, the best in the NFL. That went for 41. Two plays already at the Steeler 22. And a third straight completion. This one to the rookie, Malcolm Mitchell. Keith Butler's defense on its heels right away to it. Trying to anchor that uh, defensive front. Shazier's had interceptions in each of the last four games. And Mitchell, who made that tackle a moment ago, the senior statesman of a young secondary that is being picked apart here the first three plays. Here's a second and five. And this one goes to Amendola, and he's about a half yard shy of the first. Well, you know, I'm not surprised by this at all to watch. They take the kick. Why did they do it? Because they had this in mind, and they I've seen this many times against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. They spread them from sideline to sideline. They're playing zone, watching Tom Brady. He can look them off with his eyes. A lot of open space to throw the football. Watch James White, top of the screen. Brady goes left, though, and it is scooped up. Nope, Mitchell, it's off the ground, off the hands of Malcolm Mitchell, and then Mike Mitchell of the Steelers had a play on a pick. It's incomplete. Well, that's what you hope for. Can we get to the quarterback once during the drive? Can we sack him? Can we make him have a penalty? And you're right, that ball went right through his hands. But the Steelers, talking to Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator, they have great speed. That's what they want to rely on. That's why they play that style of defense, to attack the short throws and make the tackles. Fourth and less than a yard. They're going to go Guskowski. 31 yards. A hold by Ryan Allen. Cardona snaps it back. The kick is good. Brady completes. Passes on his first four snaps to four different receivers. And it leads to a quick three. Less than two minutes into the game. Six plays to set up the kick. They had fourth and one, decided to go field goal. Yeah, I like the decision. I think Bill Belichick said, okay, the night we got here, he wanted to get that lead and didn't want to, like, go for that fourth down uh, call there. And if he didn't make it, that would give so much emotion to Pittsburgh. Did the right thing. And the field goal. Boskowski now boots it. Gilbert is there to handle it near the five. And the former first-round pick for the Cleveland Browns, Stiff Arm, out of bounds at the 22, where he's forced out by Jonathan Jones. Ben Roethlisberger, this is his 20th postseason game, and this sets the Pittsburgh record now for most appearances. 
in the playoffs. He was tied with Bradshaw and Franco and Blunt coming in. It's 13 and 6 all time with a win, 70% if he was to win this game. Gilbert was not up for the game in the regular season against New England. He was out with an injury. And there's Bell, who has set and then broke his own record a week later. These last two weeks, he's been unstoppable. 167 and 170. And they're going to give it to him right away. There's Bell. Working that middle for about three. Matt Patricia's defense. Third best in the league against the run. And this is going to be a guy right now that could really be a run stopper tonight. Alan Branch, Hightower, Pro Bowler in the secondary. One of the matchups to keep an eye on. Butler against A.B. Antonio Brown. Will Bell be able to run the football effectively up against that front and up the middle? We'll see. Second and seven. Here he goes again. I guess he's got a little room. And he's got six. Be third and one coming up. Well, let me say this. Couple things. New England famous for what? Taking away your best player. So in a lot of opportunities tonight, they're going to double team Antonio Brown. Jim, you asked the question, can they run up the middle? I think the best way they can do that is to get in the shotgun, spread it out, make the New England defense spread a little, and then Le'Veon Bell will have a better chance inside. He said it, 97, Allen Branch is the key. Can they block him and move him with the center and guards? Third and one, Roethlisberger, deep ball, looking for Coates. It went through his hands. Eric Rowe on the coverage. Inside, Eric Rowe, the extra corner that comes in on passing situations. And Sammy Coates. Mike Tomlin thought that he would have a chance to be or play a big role in this game tonight. Has great speed. They gave him a chance to go deep and just misjudges the perfect throw by Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, the pass was right there, and Tomlin saying that Coach has just been killing everybody in practice the last couple of weeks. Blew a chance there. There's the punt by Barry. And let's see where they mark it out of bounds at the 33. 36 yard boots. Three and out for Ben and company. Brady coming back out. Got the quick field goal the first time they had it. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Diet Dr. Pepper. It's the sweet one. And by the all-new Civic Hatchback from Honda. Images from the two previous championship meetings between these teams. New England coming out on top in both. Both played in the Steel City. And they had return touchdowns in both games. Now, here is Blunt, who started the game and had a huge performance back in October against this very bunch. His biggest rushing total of the season, 127. But he's dropped back for a loss of two. How about this? The Patriots have not trailed in a game it's all the way back wow. in early December. Pretty impressive. I'm a front runner too. You know, I don't like being in front. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's always that. But how about the de the offense? They came out, spread, hurry up. This time they come out with the running back in the backfield, the tight end. They give you so many looks, tough to defend. Let's call it second and eleven. Movement and Brady just unloads it. And it looked like maybe just uh, everything out of rhythm with the exchange. There is no flag, even though one of the Steelers was looking for a pre-snap. Well, penalty. Some, yeah, something happened. Did Andrews snap the ball before? Oh, yeah, a little double clutch. That's what happens to Tom Brady. Did the smart thing, got rid of the football right away. Well, just like that, it's third and 11. And James White is in the backfield. We've not seen uh, Deion Lewis except on a kick return. Yeah, that monster performance against Houston, but fumbled twice. I'm sure he's paying a penalty. It's Brady in trouble, and he's taken down by Hargrave, the rookie. Hargrave makes well, a couple of plays on this series, Phil. Yeah, here he comes in the side. Last week, we saw the Houston Texans get pressure up the middle against Tom Brady, and they once again start here tonight. Nice job by Hargrave. Rookie, three rookies starting on the, on the defense. Excellent play. 
And that Steeler defense has certainly changed since the October 23rd encounter. Led the league, in fact, in sacks over the last seven weeks of the regular season. And Brown signals for a catch near the 39. 39 yard punt. That's Hargrave taking Brady to the ground. Tomorrow, TV's number one new comedy has its biggest episode yet. Don't miss a new Kevin Can Wait. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Well, you know, one thing New England's worried about is the speed of these receivers. We saw that early, third and short. Ben Roethlisberger threw it deep down the field to, it, to Sammy Coates, who beat Eric Rowe, just misjudged the football. There's that hesitation move by Bell, and he's able to pick up about six. Boy, excellent job. Here's the big key when you watch tonight. Allen Branch, can they block him? Can they find a way? They single him up, and then they double team Trey Flowers. And that time, Le'Veon Bell got a little shake and took it off the right side. Second and four. Oh, and that pass had a reach for Brown. Bell with these early carries has set the single postseason record in Steeler history for most yards rushing, eclipsing Franco's performance over the set of games back in 1974. Pretty impressive. What to tell you? You, know, you talk about Ben Roethlisberger, we talk about Bell and Brown, but they got a terrific offensive line from one side to the other. No true weakness. Split out Bell to the left, third and four. the pocket forced out of it complete that's James with the first down catch on the New England side of the field gain of seven Chris Long was in Roethlisberger's face but he's able to get it away in a first down well good job one thing you want to do when you pay play Ben Roethlisberger keep him in the pocket not that he's going to scramble for big yards but he gets out of the pocket just buys a little time and makes throws really a big point of emphasis for this defense they talked about it to, with us Jim from the 48 complete but nothing there David Johnson for one immediately chopped up by Logan Ryan NFL fans, go to NFLshop.com and get your conference championship product after the game at the official store of the NFL, NFLshop.com. You know, a lot of people, we talk about so much about the Patriots, you don't talk about this defense that's good in basically every category, and what they are great at is tackling. They don't miss many tackles. They ramp up, use their arms. They don't go for those knockout highlight hits. Second and nine, waiting forever, it seemed. As Bell, a lot of the guys would have just been stacked up at the line. He manages to get three out of that. Well, you look at these numbers. He takes longer than any other running back when it, you talk about being behind the line of scrimmage. And you can do that because this offensive line in front of him, they do a great job of making contact, and the defenders can't get away. I'm not saying they're holding, but they stay close, keep those hands on you. Tough to do. Next-gen stats showed you that trying to convert another third down third and six at the Patriots 44 Roethlisberger up top and it is almost intercepted but falls incomplete Malcolm Butler jumped in front of Antonio Brown well Malcolm Butler very good coverage that time and he can play aggressive to the outside stays in there because he knows he has a safety deep that's going to get over there, Jerron Harmon, to help him out. Oh, Brown stuck a hand in there and took away a pick. And now Jordan Berry will try to pin him deep. And over in, down to about the two, and it tumbles right into the end zone. Not much of a net on that one. Just 24. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by TD Ameritrade.
and by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. That Pittsburgh offense and scoring touchdowns on the first three drives against Miami to open the playoffs. One touchdown the last 20 drives. And now Deion Lewis makes his first appearance on offense. Pass to Lewis. And he's thrown down after three by Ryan, Ryan Shazier. Yeah, that's a good example right there, isn't it? Just of what Pittsburgh wants to do. And it's built around this team. It's built a defense around the linebackers. Speed. Keith Butler said, 14 years in Pittsburgh, best team I've ever had. Brady quickly now. Takes the snap, gets it over to Edelman, a yard shy of a first. Got to be ready for everything. This hurry up at the last second. You can still see the Steeler defense running around trying to get in position. Inside of a yard to go. Third down, Lewis. And he fights through the tackle attempt by James Harrison. He's got the first down. How about James Harrison? Just talking about him. About eight defenders on this Pittsburgh defense stay in and play every snap of the game. Again, quickly, Patriots going back to Lewis. Got a good game here. Lewis, who hit for the triple last week. The kick return touchdown. Caught one for a touchdown. Ran one in, but he fumbled a couple of times. And you think Belichick would have been ecstatic about his play? No, not at oh, all. Oh, no, no. And he had live tackling this past week with full pads because of those fumbles. There he is again. Second and two. This is clock. Carry right. Davis. And Lewis held to about one. And Lewis had to carry a football around, or he did all week long. Teammates, as he walked by, would try to slap it out of his hands. And, you know, not too often do you, once the season you get this late, especially in the playoffs, do you go live. But they did it to work on securing the football. It's replaced by James White here on third and short. To Hogan. Is it holds on. First down. Thrown down by Artie Burns. So many little plays that the Patriots have. You know, third and short. It's just it's a screen play. Wide receivers block. Chris Hogan comes underneath. To keep you off balance, they throw a lot of screens to the outside. Josh McDaniels has faced this defense many times and has had great success. They bring in Blunt. You set it downs at the 43. Easy. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Now, Brady comes out of that, splits everybody out. What did he see? He saw an opportunity with Hogan. Down to about the 30. Big plays. They used to do this with Rob Gronkowski. He's not there anymore. So Chris Hogan's going to go right up the slot. Zone defense. Throw the football. Perfect throw. Back shoulder between the linebacker and the safety. Picks up 26. By action. Now. Another completion. Hogan with three catches the last three plays and a little slow to get up. He injured a thigh last week. A nice route. Hardy Burns playing it safe. That's what they do in Pittsburgh. Don't give up the big play. It's blocked. And off the shoulder side of the line, he plows down to about the 16. Well, this tempo, as fast as they are going, we, when I talked about this Steeler defense, they just do not substitute a lot of guys. This speed and success, I don't care what kind of shape you're in, it can become a factor. And Hogan, just a couple of plays ago, shaken up, but he is still out there as they continue his hurry-up style from the 16. With Blunt hitting the handle and written down by Shazier. Chase here, very fast. Look, he's on the right side of the defense, reads the run, and gets all the way across to the left side to make that play. And he's turned into, you know, everything they hoped he would be when they drafted him in the first round from Ohio State. So fast, a very good blitzer because he can just shake tackles, guards, whoever's against him because of the speed he has. Third and five. 
Brady. Well protected. All kinds of time, and that goes in. So wide open. Touchdown, New England. Chris Hogan. This is something, number 15 on the outside. Chris Hogan just goes uncovered into the end zone. Nobody sees him. And we watched the Patriots on Friday practice. And Tom Brady dropped back sometimes. It took six and seven seconds to throw the football because of the rush, three-man rush, and just wait till somebody gets open. And nobody there on Chris Hogan. What a mistake. And Gronkowski liking what he's seeing as the... Patriots drive down the field after that kick went into the end zone. It's a chance to pin New England. Again, Hogan did the bulk of the work. He caught four balls on that series for 57 yards, including a couple of third down receptions and the touchdown. Look at these numbers. In five career home games against the Steelers, Brady now 16 touchdowns, never been picked. In the meantime, Chris Hogan, the former lacrosse player from Penn State and later Monmouth, who was with Buffalo, then came here as a free agent. Last week was his first ever playoff game. He caught four balls on that one for nearly 100 yards. Well, he was flying in practice on Friday. I'll say that all the receivers for the Patriots were. Stepping up, that's Coates from the two. Oh, man, is he shoved back by Jones. Well, Jim, let's go back and look at this touchdown and what the Patriots did. They made Ross Cockrell on the outside make a choice. Are you going to stay outside with Chris Hogan, or are you going to cover the receiver that's going down the sideline, and nobody picks up Hogan as you look at all the – where everybody ran to, and – how about the time that Brady had to throw? He just kind of slid to his left, and he was never in danger of anybody getting near him. When you have that kind of time, the zone breaks down, and that's what happened. The extra time allowed the touchdown, and he's looking all over the field, so the defenders are moving. Chris Hogan wide open. D'Angelo Williams comes into the backfield. They pick up Hightower, who came rushing across. And that is dropped by Roosevelt Nix, the fullback, unable to hold on. The Pro Bowl is headed to Orlando and returning to the traditional AFC-NFC matchup. And you can watch your favorite stars compete in the Pro Bowl presented by Aquafina. That's next Sunday, 8 Eastern, on ESPN. Well, the Patriots in time came with the blitz. They know they got the emotion on their side. Pittsburgh backed up. And Bell comes back in. They give it to him. Looking for something. Finds nothing. Look at Patrick Chung. And Bill Belichick was telling us how much better this defense has operated with Chung dropping down more than he used to. Yeah, he's excellent here. Just watched 97 again. Chung is over here on the right. But look how everybody's holding the offensive lineman up, not moving, not creating a hole for Bell to pick and see and get through. Third and ten. Watch the left guard, taps the center when he's going to snap it. Clark Rogers, first down. Eli Rogers. For 16. Yeah, what they did, got a little pick move to the right side, and Logan Ryan, number 26, was on Eli Rogers, couldn't fight his way through it, has to go behind, and that's why Eli Rogers was wide open. Pittsburgh gets out of a pinch from inside the 20, and they go with D'Angelo Williams. He's got one. 
And let's go to Tracy. Well, Jim, it was a rough week for Antonio Brown as he streamed live a video from the locker room that included Mike Tomlin's post-game speech about the Patriots and the upcoming matchup. Brown did apologize, saying he just got caught up in the moment. Tomlin called the act selfish and inconsiderate, but he told us yesterday, since Tuesday, it has been a non-story, Jim. Well, so far, Brown has been a non-story in this game, has not caught a pass. Final minute of the first quarter. I thought, yeah, Jim, I thought they'd come out and try to get him the football early to get his confidence going. Had 106 catches in the regular season. And back to Rodgers, and he steps out near another first. And Bell, you see, on the sideline holding onto a helmet. Once again, they are making sure Antonio Brown, they got two guys over there covering him. And who's going to be the next receiver to step up? You know, there's a couple. They gave Sammy Coates a chance, but Eli Rogers, a couple catches, big first downs for the Steelers. And you saw Bell talking to the team doctor, Dr. James Bradley. That's not a good sign. From the 42, new set of downs. There's Williams. Well, they got a good backup, that's for sure. D'Angelo Williams, good job of running, came in and caught that pass. We're through one. 10-0 New England, a Gaskowski field goal, a Brady touchdown to Hogan. And you're watching the AFC Championship game on CBS. Melvin Brown so uh, responsible for Steeler production through the season, the postseason. Not much to speak of so far in this one. 18 yards on the ground for Bell, who appears ready to come back in. And no catches for Brown as we start the second quarter. They give it to Williams. First down and more, down to the 37. Got a gain of 15, and this is the play where Bell was injured right here. Watch his left ankle. We think this is what happens. He just is kind of caught in the ground a little bit. Could have been his knee, not sure, but... Good draw play by the Steelers. That was their best run when they played earlier this season. Draw plays against this defense. First down at the 37. And crossing pass. There's Brown. High stepping in. And getting pushed out by Logan Ryan. Tracy. Well, Jim, I was watching Le'Veon Bell speak with Dr. James Bradley. They were doing no, nothing to that ankle. They were just talking to him for a long time. He got up. He did some running on the sideline. As I'm watching him right now, He's kind of moving around that left ankle. That seems to be what's bothering him. But he also looks like he's ready to get back in there if given the chance, Jim. Hey, they're going to stick with Williams, who they put in a slot to the left. And a first down now at the 26. <laughs> Just beat the play clock. A great catch by Rodgers. Diving across, picks up about eight. Yeah, really good job by the offensive line. It's a late blitz inside by Kyle Van Noy, and they pick it up and see it. How about Eli Rodgers, three? The late, see number 53, here he comes. And Gilbert, ready for him, knocks it to the side, gives Ben a little extra chance to throw the ball down there and get the completion. And Eli Rodgers, second year from Louisville, has three catches on this series. Back to Williams on second and two, and he's got another first down. You know, you look at Eli Rogers, undrafted free agent. They go to Louisville to watch Devontae Parker, the first round pick of the Miami Dolphins. They say, who's this other guy here, Eli Rogers? And, and got hurt in training camp 2015, and he is a terrific slot receiver. Trey Flowers is down for the moment. He's had a big year for the Patriots. We'll step aside as we take a look at tonight's nationwide sky cam. Flowers appeared to be just fine. He got off on his own. Didn't appear to be too serious. Replaced by Vincent Valentine. New set of down Steelers from the Patriots 14. This is the 11th play of this drive. Back over to Williams. Takes off the first hit. Moves ahead to the 11. He's been a nice change of pace for him here on this drive. Yeah, he has. Nice catch that time. They tried to get Antonio Brown across the field, but they were waiting on it. The Patriots were. But D'Angelo Williams, a totally a different style runner. 
than Le'Veon Bell, more direct. In other words, he's going to see it and go. He's not going to wait. And if it's not there, he'll just try to power through and get an extra yard. Second and seven. Fake to Williams. Looking around, looking for Brown. Passes up underneath on the left side and goes over to James. James fighting for that first down yardage, and he's close. Well, that time you get down in the red zone, anytime you get inside the 20, they are going to double team your best players. And you see Malcolm Butler, there's a safety over the top. Devin McCourty, a good job by the offensive line. Roethlisberger finding the outlet, Jesse James. Third and a foot. Williams trying to pick it up, and he does. And he fights for the end zone. And they say touchdown. Really nice cutback by D'Angelo. D'Angelo Williams, Ramon Foster, good block. Dillon away with the left tackle. It's going to be close. It's a big drive by the Steelers to get momentum going back on their side and keep that Patriot offense over there. Goes back to that third and long to hit Eli Rogers going across the middle. Williams had a, even a little bit of one of those uh, Le'Veon Bell hesitation moves. Did he get in, though? Knee down? It's confirmed. Possible for the extra point. Look out. First point after he's missed all season long. But he second miss in the postseason. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Chips, in theaters everywhere March 24th. And by Verizon, join a better network because better matters. The end zone militia here in Foxborough. But they've just watched Roethlisberger complete his last seven throws and a lot of damage inflicted by D'Angelo Williams. 34 yards on that drive, including the touchdown. Rodgers, 33 yards receiving. I think his style kind of confused his New England defense. Worked all week getting ready for Le'Veon Bell. You see a different style runner. Deion Lewis had the 98-yard kick return last week. And he's met head-on by Knicks. At the 17, what happened on that PAT, Jay Feely? Well, Jim, when Boswell missed the extra point against Miami, the wind was blowing right. He didn't play it enough. The wind was again in his face and blowing right. He aimed left, but his head came up early, came straight across the ball. And you're going to see his body. His head comes up. He wants to stay down. He picks it up. His shoulders are pointed left, hits the ball there. And I think the impact of the missed extra point against Miami played into his miss on that extra point as well. He goes 36 for 36 in the regular season, and now three out of five in the post. Of course, he kicked all those field goals last week. Six of them. Near side, Bennett. Little shake. Picks up nine. Well, yesterday marked the 23-year anniversary of Robert Kraft drop buying this franchise. And this is the 40th playoff game in the Kraft era. Overall for this franchise, this is number 50 for New England overall. If they were to win it as one, Stumbles picks up the first. If they were to win this game, they would play their 51st all-time postseason game in Super Bowl 51. Now, some of the numbers hard to believe. You don't think you're going to see a dynasty in football and to such continued and long success. The Patriots have done it. Of course, it always starts with the owner. And the day he hired Bill Belichick was a pretty good hire, too. Tom Brady, they draft him. 17 years. 94. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick together. Yep, they came together 80 days apart. As Brady steps up, already had Hogan open. They love these play-action fakes where they, it's going to be a 
A little reverse fake. He comes around to give him extra time, and it's a deep thrower going deep down the field, and Chris Hogan coming straight across, and Tom Brady knows he missed a big play. Where everybody was in, blocking for Tom Brady, only two receivers out. Nobody covering Chris Hogan. He's got four receivers for this snap, second and ten. Fakes to Edelman. Trying to come to the other side, and he sees the Pittsburgh defense is all over that one. Harrison was wreaking havoc in the backfield, too. Well, great job by Tom Brady getting rid of the football. They're going to fake the screen one way and go back to the other to try to throw it to White. And it is well covered. The Steelers, look, they practice against screens every day with their own offense. Should be good at stopping it. Third and ten. Dupree lined up right over Andrews, the center. But he backs off. Goes into coverage. Down the middle. That's Edelman with a first down grab. Pick up a 12. They fake a blitz. They drop back in zone. Watch all everybody turn and run. Lawrence Timmons in the middle of the field, and that little gap is all Tom Brady needed. And he let a fast ball go. It's good. You could sit there and watch the quarterback, but when he throws that hard, you can't react to it. 94, alert! Alert! Yeah, 94, 319! Good job. Okay. And Burns holds on to him. Keeps him to four. Thursday, February 2nd, on CBS, one detective plays by the rules, another breaks them. From the producers of CSI, a whole new day begins. Training day premiering Thursday, February 2nd, only CBS. Second and six. What? And he is chopped by Tuit, who got across that line in a hurry. Yeah, he sure did. Step on to it. Boy, has he been spectacular here all year for him. And he's another defender, just one of many that plays basically every play of the game. They give him like one or two snaps off. That's pretty impressive for a big guy to be productive all game long. They have held Blunt so far to four yards on five carries. Third and eight. That's James White flanking Brady. He's a threat out of the backfield in the passing game. Brady. That's open. Hogan is having a huge first half. His sixth catch takes the football down to the Pittsburgh 34. Pick up a 22. Well, they, they, they catch him. It's a, again, the Edelman jumps outside. There's no corner. They go, he falls inside. So Chris Hogan. Once again, sitting outside, uncovered. So, if you're going to play zone, you got to stay in your space. You can't, you can't chase somebody across the field and leave a wide receiver uncovered. Hogan, that's his third, third down conversion. Back to him, they go. The flea flicker. Brady to the end zone, and it's a New England touchdown. Right back to Hogan again. Well, this is a flea flicker they've been running for many, many years up here in New England. Little different formation this time, but what a sell. Hogan's going to go across. Tom Brady and all, oh, just Deion Lewis takes it into the line of scrimmage before he throws it back. And Tom Brady puts it right on the money. Whoa. Wasn't a clean catch. Yeah, it wasn't. He took his eyes off of it maybe just a second early, but what a good time to call that play. And the Patriots, Josh McDaniels, this offense, it has a little bit of everything in it, no question. Reverses screens. Now we saw the flea flicker. Deskowski, he kicks it through. Brady with his 60th postseason touchdown pass. Hogan, seven catches, 117 yards, and both touchdowns for New England. Amendola, have a little word with the star so far, Chris Hogan. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide, recognizing players who've made 
big impact both on the field and in their communities. And earlier today, Larry Fitzgerald, Eli Manning, Greg Olson, all announced as the three finalists. We'll be announcing the winners on the NFL Honors Show February 4th on Fox. Congratulations to those three doing wonderful things in their communities. Well, Jim, let's watch this flea flicker. Watch the safety in the middle of the field, Mike Mitchell. And you see the lines where everybody runs. Chris Hogan going across. Mike Mitchell thinks it's a run, comes flying up. It's too late. Chris Hogan, he said it's a lacrosse player from Penn State. One year of college football at Monmouth University. Only caught a few passes. Played a lot of defense when he was at Monmouth. Played defense, too. You know, he went and played lacrosse because he was mad and upset that nobody, the big schools, didn't come up after him and offer him a scholarship. Big mistake. Of course, he's showing everybody why. Had to beat around the league, too, for a couple teams before he found a home here. Bell back into the game. And Trey Flowers also returns and makes the tackle. And Tracy, back down to you. Jim, you see Le'Veon Bell back out there. The Steelers are calling it a left groin injury. They put some heat on it on the sideline, and now he's just ready to get back out there. They were trying to wait and see if it, how it would react, and it looks as though they were happy with it, although he just came off the field, and he's standing again on the sideline. So it just may be a situation where he goes in and out of the game and deals with it the rest of the way, Jim. Yeah, that did not look like the smoothest uh, jog back to the sideline. One play, and he's out. Roethlisberger, it's over to Williams, and he steps out just past the first down yardage. Now ben Roethlisberger, the fake reverse, he wants to go deep down the field. But watch Malcolm Butler, 21, against Antonio Brown, just once again being aggressive at the line of scrimmage. Knows he has somebody back there to help him, and took Antonio Brown right out of play. Hobie Hamilton comes in as an extra receiver. First down at the 36. Bell's taking the helmet off on the sideline. And the open, but not much there for Brown. Three or four. Well, that was a zone coverage. That's why he got it. But here's what's happening. Look to the outside. Antonio Brown, Malcolm Butler. Look where the safety is. He's watching the quarterback knowing he's going to get over there and help out Malcolm Butler. And what's the number one thing we always hear about Bill Belichick? Heard it on all the pregame shows all day long. He is going to take away your number one weapon. And for the Steelers, that's Antonio Brown. Ben has hit his last nine throws. That's second and seven. the run over to Williams who again is going to pick up a first down in the passing game. Boy nice play by Ben Roethlisberger and really a good job this offensive line they are veterans they are tough the good run blockers and excellent pass blockers that time he caught New England just watching the quarterback that's why Williams is wide open. down out of the gun and he's able to find Rodgers out of the slot for seven what a nice catch he knew he could do it too because Malcolm Butler was not on Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger green is good 11 in a row for him you like green because it's money <laughs> no you know I, mean? I, I like just I to a, see that you knew I was gonna jump on you about that first <laughs> and you beat me to it oh. A really excellent job. Steelers really keeping their emotions in, in check. Their defense is struggling, but this offense moving the football. Second and three. Running it off the right side again. And they stuff D'Angelo Williams this time for one, maybe two. You know, you got to keep your patience, too. Ben Roethlisberger, that's a big deal here. Why? Because the Patriots 
toughest defense in the NFL to score against. Why? Because they make you march 10 and 12 plays. They are not going to get beat, get beat deep. Matt Patricia, number one thing. Houston last week did not have a play over 20 yards the entire game. And so far for the Steelers, their longest play, 16 yards to Eli Rogers on what was a third and 10 from their own 16 that set up a touchdown drive. Here it's third and two. Roethlisberger fires it wide open. Brown got loose in the secondary, and Butler's tangled up with him out of bounds for a first down gain of 12. It looked like Tom Brady on that throw. You're going to drop back and watch the quarterback. He is going to just stick it down there. Antonio Brown, see Logan Ryan was tough, tough at him at the line of scrimmage, but he freed up. Ben Roethlisberger saw it, made a good throw. A new postseason career streak for Roethlisberger, 12 straight completions. It used to be on third and, you know, one yard or two yards, they would run the football. Nowadays, everybody throws it on third and one or two. Now this is first down. He lost it. He's got it. It's James, and now both quarterbacks are 15 for 19 in this game. Wow. Patrick Chung against Jesse James has that whole right side to himself, and Ben Roethlisberger just perfect touch on the football. Boy, the wet conditions, what wins on the field, not bothering either one of these QBs, that's for sure. Brady with a couple big plays, puts him over 200 yards. From the 21, on first down with time, looking for the end zone, and it is dropped. Hamilton. Roethlisberger hit him right in the belly. Trying to break it up was Eric Rowe, maybe he did. Yep, Eric Rowe times it, I think, on time. Nope, it's just a drop by Kobe Hamilton. Boy, these young receivers, that's two big drops. Yep. Coach with one early in the game, and Hamilton drops a touchdown. <laughs> Second and ten. And he'll go with Williams. And he tries to fight through Allen Branch. Uh, you're not going to get around him too often. Malcolm Brown as well there. Holds him to two. And we have the two-minute warning. Steelers driving, but down 11. The three Bs, this is what they've done. And Bell perhaps finished for the night with that groin injury. Well, they're very fortunate they have a backup running back like D'Angelo Williams, who... When he was called upon early in the year, did a good job when Bell was suspended. Third and eight, ball rest at the Patriot 19. Here's Roethlisberger, finding James, and that's a touchdown. What a play by Jesse James. That's just like what he did on the last drive when he Fought off some defenders and was able to pick up a first down after the catch. Yeah, good job. He had Patrick Chung on him. First off, the protection is really good. Ben Roethlisberger stands in there, but Jesse James took it in like he was going across the field then broke back to the outside. Ooh, this may not be a touchdown. It'll be short. It's automatically reviewed. And it's going to be... A It'll be a foot short, looks like. Now it looks like to be short of the goal line. They're going to review it. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. And by Subway. Search for better. All right, Terry McCauley. After review, the runner was down by contact, short of the goal line. It will be first and goal for Pittsburgh. The clock will start on the ready for play. Jim, we talk about just short of the goal line. 
Antonio Brown. They're going to take him out of the game with double coverage as much as they can. What receiver is going to help this Pittsburgh offense out? Eli Rogers with a few catches. And Jesse James, four catches for 42 yards. Pretty good stuff. And James coming off a five-catch game for 83 against Kansas City, the Glassport, Pennsylvania native. Yeah, that was a really good route. And we'll be right back in the take a little timeout on the field. Official timeout. Back at 30. Rising halftime report is coming up shortly. JB Tony Bart Boomer, Coach Cower. Highlights analysis of the first half. Steelers, first and goal, foot away. Three tight ends in there. They give it to Williams. And the Patriots are on them right away. They knock them back a yard. McClellan, high tower. They block the center of that field. And now the Patriots call a timeout. They're first. Well, good job by Bill Belichick managing the clock here. He's calling timeout. So if they do score, whatever happens here, give his offense one more chance on the field. And if they do score here, Mike Tomlin will go for a two faster than anybody in the league. Well, if he goes for two, I'll disagree with it. I'll have to get ahead of the score because that time, Jay McClellan chased the butter down before he could get to the line of scrimmage. Now from the two. Williams again, and they're backing up. They are backing up two straight plays. Valentine, the rookie from Nebraska this time. And again, a timeout, Patriots. Look at this play by Valentine. Yep, three big guys inside. That's why I thought it would be tough to run the football up the middle in this game. Valentine, Jamal Brown, Allen Branch, you talked about him. They're, they're making that penetration and doing this and stopping some of these runs against one of the better offensive lines in the NFL. They were a foot away and first down at that point. Now it's third to go. And by the way, the Patriots did use their third timeout there. So they're out of timeouts. Now they're outside of the five. Pittsburgh is. To Rodgers. Wide of the mark. Never had a chance. Rowe was right there with him. And they'll bring out Boswell. Yep. Oh, what a disappointing sequence, though, for the Steelers, who thought they had a touchdown. The replay showed otherwise, and then they can't punch it across. Well, Eli Rogers trying to get outside. Eric Rowe in good position. If the football was on the mark, he was going to be tackled well short of the end zone anyway. They were not going to let their defenders get picked. Good job by Eric Rowe staying outside. 23-yard attempt. Never missed in the postseason. As far as field goals go. And this time he is good with the field goal from 23 out. So after the review, a Patriot defense stands up, keeps them out. There they are in the studio back in New York. Bart Boomer. There with Coach and Tony and JB at the controls. The Verizon halftime report is coming up. First player to ever make the first 15 field goal attempts of his postseason career, Chris Boswell. You think if uh, Le'Veon Bell was healthy in that same situation right there? I know D'Angelo has done some good things here yes. tonight. Do you think it would have been any different? Well, not if the runs were identical to what we saw. He couldn't have broke those tackles or run over any of those big guys. Maybe the play selection would have been different if he was in there. Lewis. Content to take the touchback. And now what will we see from New England as Brady takes the field over 200 yards and a couple of touchdown passes? Well, I think Pittsburgh's got to do a couple of things. Either they got to find a way to get to Tom Brady with the blitz or whatever. They're going to have to play some man-to-man -man coverage because when you play zone, you drop back, and they space the field, and his arm, powerful. He sees, he moves the guys, the defenders with his eyes, and 
a lot of easy completions so far in this game for Tom Brady. Out of timeouts with 139 on the clock. That's White. Trying to find out of bounds, the sideline. And they say no. They've tackled him in the field of play. And don't forget now the Steelers have all of their timeouts. That was Shazier on the tackle. Second and eight. Make a couple of times. That would have been better serve there to not even catch that one because that picks up a yard. And now I'm wondering if Mike Tomlin's weighing any consideration. Yeah, I think I think Mike Tomlin is happy with the way it is right now. He's not going to call a timeout and take a chance where, oh, okay, we force them to go for the first down and maybe give up some late first half points and they get the ball to start the second half. Let this clock run out. That's what they want to do. Third and seven. to Amendola first down at the 36. Now Brady smells a chance to get in the field goal range somehow with 25 seconds and a spike it right here. Well once again it's just Tom Brady getting the time and then you see everybody spread the defense they read his eyes that time and Sean Davis makes a good break on the football but he can't get there quick enough. Patriots that six out of eight on third down. To me, that's the story of the first half, and that's why Tom Brady, we, you know, we've said that his success against this defense over the years, you play zone, this offense is built to pick apart zones like he's done so, so far here tonight. Harrison is coming after him, and Bennett is tackled down by Timmons. And that may that might pretty do much it. do it. Good for, job that time, Jim. They blitzed that time. William Gay was on a blitz, made Tom Brady get rid of the football quick, and just takes away any chance of a score by New England. Yeah, we've got our halftime score of 17 9. New England. I'll tell you what, it, Bennett is limping. Bennett is limping after that tackle. Yeah. We'll see, hyper extended a knee in the game against Houston. Somehow get back onto the field just a few plays later. Roethlisberger trots in 16 of 22 for 136. And we head downstairs to Tracy. Thanks a lot, Coach. You've been able to move the ball, but defensively, how do you get more pressure on Brady and contain this passing game? You know, we just got to settle down and continue to play. We got a one possession game here. It would have been significant had we been able to get a touchdown on the last series. So we just got to stay composed and continue to work. Le'Veon Bell dealing with a groin injury. Do you expect to see him in the second half? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta talk to him. I gotta talk to our medical experts. We'll do what's appropriate. Thanks a lot, Jim. That's the end of the first half with the score: the Patriots 17, the Steelers 9. We'll be back with the Verizon halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. 17 to 9. The winner to head to Houston for the Super Bowl in two weeks' time. That's Sunday, February 5th, when Pepsi presents the biggest concert of the year, the Pepsi Zero Sugar Super Bowl 51 Halftime Show. Visit PepsiHalftime.com to follow Lady Gaga on her journey to the world's biggest stage. Well, that was an interesting first half. A lot of offense there. 126 yards of offense for the Patriots, 180 for the Steelers who drove it their last two possessions. As Coates on the goal line, he got walloped early in this game, and there's Slater trying to bring him down. Shakes off the hit. And he did a good job getting that out to the 30-yard line. I was just looking out at the tunnel, and the last Steeler to take the field getting out here late was Le'Veon Bell. And yeah. now I see looking onto the field that uh, D'Angelo Williams is going to start the second half. Yeah, I, I don't expect to see him here. You know, after that, a running back, a growing injury, whatever, tough to overcome. You know, just a few things about the first half. We've seen it in the past that when the Steelers play defense like they played in the first half, 
Tom Brady has big days. So they came out and did exactly what they've done in the past, and he picked them apart. So for the Steeler defense, they're going to have to change what they're thinking of on the defensive side, play man-to-man -man or find a way to make it a little tougher for Tom Brady. From the 31. There's Coates. Did a good job on the kick return. Now he's backing up. And he's able to power ahead back to about where he caught it. Just a gain of three, and he's a little gimpy getting up. Not a single flag in that first half. Nor a turnover. I like it. Patriots, not much rushing yards, but I don't think they, that matters to them. They've shown this kind of offense and thrown it quite a bit when they played the Steelers. They did it here again tonight. That's Williams spinning, trying to get around a Landon Roberts and give him a couple. Now with nine carries, 26 yards, D'Angelo Williams, the all-time leading rusher at Carolina. He's been in the league 11 years, and when he's had to fill in for Le'Veon Bell, which has been a couple of occasions, and you know, suspended the first part of this season, and he had some big numbers, had some big showings last year, including week one here at New England when he went over 120 and a couple of touchdowns. Those numbers, 258, include uh, not much of an output week three when they uh, were beaten up pretty badly by the Eagles in Philadelphia. Here's third and four. Roethlisberger getting hit when he throws it, and the defender never turned around. Logan Ryan defending on Eli Rogers, and that was Trey Flowers in the face of Roethlisberger when he released it. Right in the middle, Trey Flowers on the center. That's where they like to put him. He's their best pass rusher, and that time they got him against Marquise Pouncey one-on-one. -on -one. Boy, nice job by Rodgers redirecting himself up the field. Ro Roethlisberger just couldn't get enough on it. So the Steelers, who had scored on their first possession of each half of their first two postseason games, both times tonight, three and out with their first series of each half. Matt Patricia likes what he saw out of Ryan on that play. Brady was under 50% last week against Romeo Crennel's defense that was number one in the league as far as uh, yardage surrendered. But tonight, taking advantage so far of a youthful secondary. 19 of 24, 222 in that first half in a pair of touchdowns. Steps up away from Harrison and unloads it to Lewis. Well, when you look at those numbers from last week against Houston to this week, two entirely different defenses. We've talked about it. Zone defense, Tom Brady's going to pick it apart like he's doing tonight. Houston played tight man-to-man -man coverage, made it much tougher to get completions, and maybe Pittsburgh will play some of that here in the second half. Second and five. And oh, the ball comes out. There's a couple of uh, flag is out, too. That's our first penalty marker of the game. As a couple of Steeler defenders crashed in on Nettleman. They're called defenseless receiver. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 50, illegal hit on a defenseless receiver. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Ryan Chazier did lead with his helmet, made contact, pretty tough. You know, Edelman's down on the ground there. They're going down low to see the football, but it's the right call to make. Gives the Patriots a first down at the 36. Blood in the backfield, contained in that first down. Brady, second step drop, goes to block. Three had hold up first, and a couple of other Steelers had to help out. Tracy, down to you. Jim, no update from the Steelers on Le'Veon Bell's status dealing with that left groin injury, but watching him down on the sidelines, he is not involved in the game plan at all, just sitting down listening. And on that last drive, his helmet was on the bench. He was up on the sidelines just watching Jim. Run on second and two. It's about halfway there. Third and one coming up. Blunt uh, had a brief spell as a member of the Steelers and was cut after 11 games after he left the left the sideline in a late season game in 2014.
They released him a few days later. He was back as a member of the Patriots. Howard Runner, you got Blunt, Deion Lewis, James White. What a trio of running backs the Patriots have that could do a little bit of everything. Tough that? to defend. Last year he was injured in the playoffs. They had to go pick up Steven Jackson late in uh, the regular season. Hey, alert! This is a healthy bunch outside of Gronkowski, this New England franchise. As Brady as he has his entire career, one of the best you'll ever see on a sneak. Well, the Steelers say the ball may have come out. That was a third and one keep by Brady, who is 95% on his career, even a little higher. But what they do, nobody's really over the center. They give Tom Brady the lane to run in there, and did he fumble that football? Officials say it stays with New England. It's just he reads the defensive front. He's going to want to run a play real quick before anyone gets a chance upstairs to look at it from the Pittsburgh staff. Nothing you can see there. And Tomlin's already, well, he's already thrown the challenge flag. Yeah, he just went over and picked it up. And he threw it a second time just to get their attention. <laughs> I think his defense done a pretty good job convincing the head coach that there's something here. Ball. Ball. Pittsburgh is challenged at the runner fumbled, and they clearly recovered the football. Timeout. So they were able to identify a clear recovery, which gets into situations often. Going to be tough. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And by Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks for 40 straight years. You've had a chance to look at it a couple of times, Phil. Definitely a fumble. Was there a clear recovery? Did they see it on film? After review, the ruling on field stands. First down, New England. Pittsburgh is charged with its first timeout. Watch Tom Brady, middle of your screen, still up in the air. Football is loose before he gets to the ground. Well, they did say, though, after the challenge flag, that they had a clear recovery by Pittsburgh. It was Hargrave who came out with it. Big number 79 on top of the pile. There he is. Yeah, Hargrave, right. yeah. You can see he has the football. And I guess they're just uh, they're believing that the ball had not come out before Brady was down. So first down for the Patriots. Look at the strike right off of it. And they do. Back to Hogan. To the 29. Another deep down the field throw. Keep the extra blockers in there to give him extra time. And Chris Hogan just acted like he was going deep down the field. He's done it pretty well tonight, so they bought it. Stop. Good throw by Tom Brady. And from the gun. Jump pass and Edelman turned around too quickly. I will say this that during that timeout while they were reviewing, fumble or no fumble. As they played it on the big board, the Steelers' sideline saw it up, and their offense went out onto the field. So. That's right. I think it all comes down to this, Jim. It's the fact that they couldn't see a clear recovery. Hargrave got up with the football, but it was too late in, in the eyes of the officials, I'm sure. That's why they didn't overturn it. Second and ten. Met right at the line is Lewis. The only thing that complicates that is that when they were going to the break, is that McCauley said that we have a clear recovery by a Pittsburgh by a Pittsburgh player. So well, they were their own eyeballs before they went to the review. They thought they had seen a recovery. Okay, so I'm confused. So you're saying you are too? That's what. We're well, yeah. just no, because is, that's yeah. what what was McCauley's viewpoint on it. So third and ten. Sideline, both feet down. No, Mitchell only got one in. Well, the few passes all night that wasn't really just on target. It, it, it is, but it leads him outside so fast. Oh, listen. 
Oh, that right foot, was it on the line? Yep. Mm. By inches. It's close. Or an inch. He brings out Koskowski. He's going to kick one here from 47 yards, left hash mark. He's made 18 straight postseason attempts. Look at that one. Turn in. Finish dead center. 47 yard field goal. 28 to 9, New England. Lead is back to 11. Here's a nationwide sky cam. As we get set for the Patriots kickoff, leading 20 to 9, 10 minutes to go in the third. Patriots coming in here on a win streak of eight. Pittsburgh having won his last nine. It's hard to believe that the Steelers actually had a stretch during the season where they lost four in a row and there was a bye week in there. They basically went about a month and a half without a victory and then they drew off the nine game win streak. Coates advised there not to run it out by Gilbert. Well, the pressure goes back on Ben Roethlisberger in the passing game. Le'Veon Bell probably out for the rest of the night. The Patriots, even if Bell was in there, I don't think they were going to make a living or win this game running the football. And Jim, we, we were at practice. We watched them. They worked on stopping Le'Veon Bell so much. Allen Branch, these big defensive linemen, were holding their ground. And they did it in the first half. But Bell is also so dangerous in the passing game. That's, that's 75 receptions on the season. That's where they miss him in the passing game. The extra weapon in the pass. And Williams pausing and hesitating and looking for something and discovering a couple. Well, yeah, you're looking for a little breathing room in there to get a couple yards. He finally did. But just once again, Allen Branch. What do you think this offense needs to do right now? Well, they want to keep... New England's defense, you know, thinking they're still going to try to run the ball. You just can't drop back and throw it every single time. So keep the defense honest. Run when you can. But we saw a couple guys step up. Jesse James, Eli Rogers make some catches in the first half. Second and eight. And James in coverage there was Van Noy. Yep, that time he didn't win it against Kyle Van Noy. Just a different defense, the New England Patriots. It kind of came together about midseason. You know, they got McClellan, Van Noy, Roberts at linebacker, all doing a good job. Matt Patricia, it took them a while to get it together. They found their good slot defender in Logan Ryan, which is always a big deal to every defense. Third and eight. an open man at the 45 that's Rodgers so you were asking all week who else is going to step up because they're going to try to take Brown away and we found the answer to that we sure have it's Eli Rodgers comes across the middle makes the catch Mike Tomlin's been talking to him about us for quite a while got hurt in training camp in 2015 this year given a chance playing well his fifth catch for 59 yards. A couple of big third down catches, I might add. And Williams always backed into by Gilbert. Well, Gilbert gets knocked in the backfield. I think it's number 90, Jamal Brown, just pushes him back. Villanueva runs into him. That was a mess. Tower trying to read Roethlisberger's eyes here for second and 11. Here's to the sideline, right on the mark. There's Brown. Well, people were open underneath, and he took the hardest throw of all. In the slot, Antonio Brown, nice job, looks down the field, used his eyes to get a little separation. Ben Roethlisberger right on target. Gain of 13. on the Patriots side of the field.
Run it out of the gun. Williams trying to get the edge. And Ryan running down the line with him. They hold him to three. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Pittsburgh, New England, or your favorite team. From game day to the draft, it has everything you need. Download the CBS Sports app today. You know, if you notice tonight, silent snap count by the Steelers offense. Ramon falls through the left guard. And they're in shotgun. This time he's under the center, so he won't have to tell Pouncey when to snap the football. Going for the big one. Going to the end zone and just out of reach to Hayward Bay, who caught a touchdown against the Patriots back in October. And again, New England does not give up a play so far in this game that's gone for 20 yards. 19 is the longest of Eric, the game. Yeah, Jim, just to watch it. Eric Rowe on the outside. If you throw it across the field, he can maybe outrun him to catch that ball. But if you throw it up the field, Eric Rowe cuts underneath it. We're talking six and a half quarters of playoff action, and the Patriots have not given up a single play over 20 yards. Third and seven. Diving catch. Nope, incomplete. Incomplete. That was James. Patrick Chung seen enough of those routes. The outside breaking route. Couple catches tonight on those. And Chung all over him. Good coverage. Roethlisberger walked all the way down the sideline right at about the point where James was unable to hold on to it. And had a little word with the back judge. Wow. He yeah. thought that should have been a hold. Yeah, there was a little pulling of the jersey there. And now Jordan Berry will try to do something he didn't do in the first half, and that's to pin the Patriots at this point. He had a touchback. <laughs> Led to a long or a touchdown drive by New England. All right, at the 11, Edelman. Williams with the Steelers touchdown, but Brady and Hogan have connected twice. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Pepsi Zero Sugar, the official sponsor of the Super Bowl 51 halftime show, and by IBM. Well, when this stadium opened back in 2002, September 9th, 02, New England's first opponent, the Steelers. Handoff, and that is read right away. Lewis tripped up by Timmons. And Lawrence Timmons, 94, middle linebacker, read it, just shot through the gap, made the tackle. And I think it's pretty evident Watch this game to win. Got to tighten up the coverage. The linebackers, James Harrison, what did he tell us last night? If we win this game, the linebackers got to play great. Mm -hmm. He dumped it off here to White. Gets out to about the 15. Well, next Sunday on ESPN, the Pro Bowl. And then tune in also February 4th for the NFL Honors on Fox. February 5th, Super Bowl 51 on Fox. We wish our colleagues over there, Joe and Troy and Rich Russo, Richie Zion, all the crew, good luck down to Super Bowl 51. Here's Brady. Edelman slides right through Timmons' tackle and scoots all the way out to the 32. Well, they came with the blitz that time. Here you go to see Sean Davis. He's there, the linebacker's blitzing, and they play zone behind it. And when you do that, you've got to get to the quarterback immediately. New England, terrific job, picks up the blitz. Tom Brady has time, receiver wide open. For Edelman now, that's four catches for 76. Wide open, it's Devlin. And the fullback out of uh, Brown. That's another first down. I mean, we've seen this mistake so many times. Here he is down at the bottom of the screen. Everybody chases Hogan inside. You have to stay outside if that's your job. 
a look at it. Devlin just, he's just out there for, to take up space. Everybody reacts inside, and Tom Brady gets another easy completion against the zone. There's now nine different targets he's hit tonight. Busting across is Dupree to tackle for a loss. Blunt, whose number's now seven carries for three yards. So they, and the Patriots, not that they've needed it, they've so far rushed in this game 13 times. These are not uncommon stats for the Patriots when they play the Steelers. 13 for 13. And it's a second and 13. I remember years ago, Jim, when they started the game with, I think, 21 or 22 mm -hmm. passes out of the first 23 plays. Hogan finds a seam. And Mitchell finally ends it. Another big play for New England. Chris Hogan coming across the field, number 15 inside. Boy, and William Gay is on coverage and just gave him so much space. Really an easy completion. Looked like it was man-to-man -man coverage, but no help inside. Chris Hogan wide open. And he's got 180 yards receiving blocks into the secondary. Now driving, surrounded by five and six dealers. Still going. Can you believe this? They finally stop him at the one. My goodness. Took more than half the team with him. Look how many players are on him at the end here, Phil. Boy, LeGarrette Blunt. There's Look four, at all the Steelers five, around. Six, seven. But then the other guys come around and help him out the offensive line. And now for the payoff. In for the touchdown. Well, that play, that long run set it off. And the Steelers said, we're going to come out and play with passion and be physical. But the one, the team with the passion and being physical tonight and winning the battle is the New England Patriots. Boy, LeGarrette Blunt, we think of him as strictly as a power runner. And Tom Brady said, hey, when he gets in the open field, you never see anybody catch him from behind. A long time tonight to get a good run, but they finally got it. Well, it was a power run that rekindled the running game. The Stamski's kick is good. After carrying seven Steelers to the one, Blunt's able to finish it off. Brady's loving what he saw. Well, the Patriots have found another weapon. Now, he had. Some big games during the season, but now he has set the Patriots' single-game postseason record with nine for 180. Wow. He's had 520-plus, 20-yard-plus plays alone. A lot of weapons on this Patriots team. They give everybody a chance. His receivers coach, Chad O'Shea, has to love what he's seen out of this kid they just picked up from Buffalo in the offseason. Yep, he's done it all. Goes down the seam, makes a nice catch. Uncovered, blown defense, Tom Brady finds him. All the flea flecker just runs through the defense. Beats everybody. And then, look at this, man-to-man -man coverage. William Gay on him, he just breaks across the field wide open. Tom Brady on the move, right on the money. I saw Chris Hogan play his high school championship game. And he had a night in that game to win, just hmm. like he's having here tonight. Rodgers and the ball comes out. Was that a clean catch? As it's recovered clearly by New England's Ninkovich. Van Noy was the one who stripped it out of Rodgers' hands. Matt Patricia's defense. Yep. That's the speed and how they've changed this defense with the linebackers. Van Noy reacts quickly. Look at the arms go out, how they tackle. They don't miss tackles. He catches it, feet, this is going to be a catch and a fumble. Looked like he had it long enough. Yep. Yep. Well, somebody covered Chris Hogan on the Pittsburgh side. Remember, he was on hard knocks at the Miami Dolphins 
They called him 7-11 because he was open all night. <laughs> Wasn't good enough to make it there. Made it in Buffalo. Doing a great job here with the Patriots. Why do you look made like that? 7-11. Uh, look at him fight through that. And then bumped out. Yards after the catch. The best team in the NFL. Let me think who that would be. That would be the Patriots. Julian Edelman in the slot. Bill Belichick says, I want guys when they get out in the field and it's one-on-one -on -one, that get by the first defender. I think he's got quite a few of those guys. William Gay, James White, ball carrier. Tom Brady tonight, 351 yards passing. It's his third conference championship game, over 300. Tied for the most all time. Second and goal. Oh, and this time Hogan. Doesn't hold on. They had a screen to the inside. Looked pretty good if he catches it. And that's a play that went for a first down in the first half. What was Hogan's first catch of nine? I didn't see the blockers down the field. He could have cut right in there behind Amendola. I think he saw it. Just too quick to run. How about that yards after the catch? 175 for the New England Patriots. Third and goal. Dropping back to the 19. And finding Edelman for the Patriot touchdown. They always run across the field. These wide receivers, a lot of crossers. So watch Edelman, number 11, watching. He goes across, stops, and comes back. Just the, we say it all the time, and we'll say it again. The number of plays, the formations, the concepts, what to do on the offensive side, it's overwhelming for most defenses and overwhelming to the Steelers tonight. And Brady, touchdown pass number three. He has tied Joe Montana. For the most games with at least three touchdown passes in the playoffs. And that one for Gostowski is wide right. Well, Bill Belichick's got to have something to yell at these guys about. A missed extra point and a drop pass. 16 points in eight and a half minutes. Tom Brady razor sharp throwing the football, though. Coming out of his hand clean. Even last week, the numbers were bad, but he threw the football well. Just they were covered and it was a little tougher than it is here tonight. This also put Edelman over 100. Wow, look at that throw. Beautiful over the top. Perfect spiral. Those perfect spirals. He throws them so hard, Jim. I think that's why the, it just makes it easy for the wide receiver to, to catch. All set up on the Rodgers fumble. There's Ninkovich coming back for the recovery. And it leads then to the Bay Area connection. Brady to Edelman. What did Brady say to us about his respect for Julian? He's like a brother. He is a brother. I love that guy, he said. Well, you know, you know what's great? And it just shows you the team and how they are. They, have, they do have great chemistry, the Patriots. And I think that's what they're really proud of, Bill Belichick is. Remember last week, or was it last week, when he was yelling at Edelman on the sideline? You know, because yep. something went wrong, and, you know, Edelman says, that's what we do. Yep. We're honest with each other. They still fight like brothers and <laughs> sit at right. the dinner table together. I, I can relate to the fight like brothers in <laughs> my family. And Josh McDaniels, you think? Brady's not loving the fact he's decided to stay oh. another year as he took himself out of uh, consideration for the 49er head coaching job. Ranks. So 11, the record, and the six trips to the Super Bowl. And that's the most. He broke a tie with Elway uh, the last time he went. I said to uh, Tom Brady on Friday, I said, uh, you should pay Josh some extra money for staying here. <laughs> yeah. He laughed, you know, because he knows this offense, he's great. 
players, coaches, but Josh McDaniels does a terrific job of just drawing up all these plays to make it easy for the players. There's Coach. Double up by Rowe and McCourty. And that's going to be finally a play over 20 yards for Pittsburgh. Well, they, they caught him. This time it's just a deep zone, and Ben Roethlisberger throws it perfect between the corner and Devin McCourty, the safety. Goes for 30. And again, the longest play of the postseason. For nearly seven quarters surrendered by the Patriots. 20-yard plus plays. New England with six, five of them. Pass plays to Hogan. And that is not complete. He was out of bounds before he had full control of it. Had a flag, though, down in the uh, middle of the field. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 26. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Logan Ryan, number 26. There he is in the slot, hitting right there. Just hit him at the line of scrimmage. Logan Ryan, one of the three of the Rutgers connections yeah. in the backfield. And boy, what a job they do. How about all the Rutgers and the players in the secondary? Three of them last week all had picks. Oh, that's, that's, Their alma mater had eight picks on the entire 2016 oh, season. Man. They had three last week, the alumni. As Brown wiggles and cradles it with two hands as Butler was really there doing a pretty good job of trying to strip it, but Brown holds on. Another big gain for Pittsburgh. Well, Bill Belichick's all these defensive backs because he used to go watch his son, Stephen, who played one year at Rutgers football, lacrosse player. Here's the matchup. I wonder if Rutgers ever played Penn State and he saw Chris Hogan. <laughs> <You know? laughs> In lacrosse. In the end zone and diving no coach. But you know what happened? He would go down there and he would go to the practices and he got to be friends with Greg Schiano, the Rutgers coach. And he saw these talents, learned a lot about them in person, which is always good to get that extra feel about a player. Drafted Devin McCourty in the first round. Ron Harmon, Logan Ryan. But he knew they'd been coached like pros at Rutgers. And that was just a, he thought that was a big deal. Bringing them in here so they could adjust quicker than most defensive backs. 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Antonio Brown, quick on his feet. And that will close out the quarter, third and two to start the fourth. New England puts up 16 in the third to lead it 33 to nine. And you're watching the AFC Championship game on CBS. We head to the fourth with the Patriots up 24. Steelers threatening though. Jim Nance and Phil Simms, Tracy Wilson and Jay Feely on hand here. The winner takes the Lamar Hunt Trophy as the AFC champions and will head to Houston to take on the Atlanta Falcons in two weeks. Third and one. Roethlisberger spreads it out, throws the quick pass, and it's caught by Hamilton for the first at the six. Uh, good job by Ben Roethlisberger to make this fake and just get it out of his hand so fast. Very good at get, catching the football and throwing it because they start every practice with seven two-point conversion tries. Mm -hmm. So that a great for the quarterback to learn to deal the football quickly. And if they get in here, you know they'll go for two. They're down three touchdowns and three twos. They stump again. Williams pulled them to one. You can see your favorite players show them all their strength, speed, and skill. The new Pro Bowl Skills Showdown, Thursday, January 26th, 7 Eastern. And don't forget to miss, uh, don't forget to see the Pro Bowl presented by Aquafina. They go back AFC, NFC in those matchups, and that's uh, January 29th on ESPN. Bell continues to just watch out with a groin injury. Yep. Suffered in that first quarter. Still the same problem, but they can't block Allen Branch inside. Williams slices down to about the two. 
What a sequence that was late in the second quarter, though, when the Steelers thought they had a touchdown with James. The replay showed otherwise, and then first and goal from about a foot out. And they just did nothing but back up two straight plays. Backed up, had to kick a field goal. Yes, this defensive line challenge was thrown at them this week. They've been more physical than the Steelers' offensive line, which doesn't really push you off the line of scrimmage. They just kind of hold you and let the running back do the work. Third and goal. Roethlisberger, he's got all kinds of time. Got to be somebody open. He's figuring. Where is it? There it is. Hamilton with the touchdown and a flag out. He might have gone out of bounds, and it came back into play, which would make him ineligible to catch the pass. Illegally touching the pass. Offense number 83. Went out of bounds, came back in, and was the first to touch the pass. The penalty has lost a down at the previous spot. Fourth down. Mm. Top of the screen, going to go across the field. Hamilton. Oh, yeah, when he makes the turn, uh, since he was not forced out, not allowed to be the first person to touch the football. And Fourth and goal, they're going to have to go for here. A tough game for Hamilton. He dropped the touchdown earlier and then out of position on that play. There's a timeout called by the Patriots. That's the signal. By the way, next weekend, PGA Tour on CBS takes you to Torrey Pines. Tigers' first regular tour event in 17 months. Mm. Phil will be there. Dustin Johnson, Jason Day, Ricky Fowler, many more. You know, what are you going to do next weekend without me? I mean, <laughs> hey, you're welcome you're to join lonely. us. Come on. Big time moment here for the Steelers. Fourth and goal. Lost it. Hamilton. Ryan broke it up. I tell you, the more you see Logan Ryan, you realize he is really one of the fast emerging corners in this league, isn't yes. he? Yes. Slot receiver, defender. Had an excellent year for the Patriots covering inside receivers. Here's the handoff. And again, Blunt, they can't bring him down. He's just getting stronger. Well, one footwork by Garrett Blunt. I mean, that was, looked like Le'Veon Bell just hopping from side to side to get those extra yards. You know, the game plan changes so much during the game with the Patriots from one week to the next. It's Deion Lewis. We're going to do it with him. and. James White. Go. He's got the first down. He could have a very heavy workload in this final quarter. The way he's going. You know, as soon as you say that, now it goes. Yeah, the four new players come in, four go out. 11 carries, 33 yards, and a touchdown after scoring 18 rushing Four touchdowns out. during the regular season, which was a Patriots single season record and 92. tops in the league. Right. Read it. 319. Good catch. has hold, and Mitchell helps out. Give him two. Yeah. One. Really safe play. You know, that's what the Patriots, they, they got so many little ways to pick up yards that are easy. That was just an outside screen trying to pick it for Edelman. It's Lewis. 
head for three. Antonio Brown tonight. Six catches, 66 yards. Well, here he is. Said right away at the beginning of this game that it's going to be tough to get the football to Antonio Brown because in big situations, they are going to double cover him. He has six catches, 66 yards, and every one, five of them have been against zone. So when they played him man to man and double teamed him, he did not catch the ball. Third and six. Edelman looking around for a flag. Not going to get it. Cockrell on the coverage. You know, just go back to Antonio Brown. I mean, we're not surprised he's not having a big night, are we? That, you know, it's, this is what the Patriots do. They, they take your weapon, and they're going to take Bill Belichick, his philosophy of how to coach football. I'm not going to let you beat me with your best player. And what about those who would say, well, that whole distraction from the locker room last Sunday night, no wonder. He wasn't a factor. You don't think that has anything to no, do with it? No, I do not. Absolutely. That one. It's Brown in the back pedal to the 25. Just enough on him. Jones, who's made a number of special teams tackles tonight. And that shoestring tackle brings him down after a 58-yard punt. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hyundai, official sponsor of Super Bowl 51. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And back with Pittsburgh, 10.26 to go. And the Bees again sidetracked in the first quarter when Le'Veon Bell went out with a groin injury. He tried to return in the second quarter. Make that the third quarter, had a one snap, and then came back off the field. It's just been yep. so unstoppable to get to this point, and then without a most of the way tonight. Airing it out, and that's intercepted. What an interception. Stepping right in front of it is Rowe. Eric Rowe tiptoes down the sideline. And the Patriots defense comes up with another takeaway. Well, Hayward Bay's the receiver running down the seam. I don't think he ever sees or looks or thinks the ball is coming his way. Gets by. He's not even looking yet. Eric Rowe, the extra cornerback. Might be the easiest interception they'll ever have. I was just getting ready to say Ben Roethlisberger's played a really solid, good game. Nothing else he could do in that interception. And by the way, the other turnover, the fumble, was the first lost fumble uh, by the Steelers in their last six games. They had only coughed it up and lost it once in a 13-game stretch. So now, New England, 10 minutes to go, 24-point lead, looking for the knockout punch. Two takeaways in the Steelers' last 11 snaps. Looks like he being held to a seven-yard gain. He splits these defenders, takes it for 13. Just yards after the catch. 33 to nine. They're going to finish the game. The Patriots are not going to just sit there and kneel on the football. The coverage is way off. Tom Brady gets an easy completion to Julian Edelman. You know the Steelers struggled so much against this offense they're going to, have to devise a new plan in the future if they want to beat this team as it stays together Sugar, well, look at those numbers by tom brady how about a career postseason high and a team record in the postseason bennett who was gimpy at the end of the first half it's back out there again two-yard catch. Tonight, 18 people will go on the run, try to avoid capture from a team of expert hunters. CBS presents the real-life thriller Hunted, premiering tonight after the game on America's number one network. Mm -hmm. 
Second and eight. They fake the play action. They come back to Bennett. He is within a yard of a first. Pretty good when you lose Gronkowski. You have a guy like Martellus Bennett, right, to oh, yeah. pick up the slack. And when they were together this year, Gronkowski and Bennett, what a tandem. Receiving there's the big Gronk upstairs watching the game. But they, together, their blocking and their pass routes, both of them together, was almost in stop. There's Blunt. First and goal at the four for New England. Well, there's a run against the defense that's tired, knows the score. And do they have enough energy to finish this game? This Patriots offense, hey, their offense, their defense, we don't talk enough about it. What? Look at that tackle by Timmons, Tomlin's first draft pick back in 2007, dragging him down. But you know, Jim, we always, Brady and we, well, yeah. always these things, and we just lose fact that the number one scoring defense in the league was, is the Patriots. That's right. And that's the real stat. And the number one scoring offense in the league has already sealed the spot down in Houston. The Atlanta Falcons. That will be an interesting little matchup. Number one score, number one stopping the score. And Brady rifles it and it's at the hands of Hogan. Got a flag out. Hogan very nearly a three Offside. touchdown game. Defense number 92. Half the distance to the goal, second down. Number 92 did not get off the field. And James Harrison finally got a break, a breather, I should say, in the game and did not get off the field quick enough. What a year he had, year 14. Once they started playing him every single down or most of the downs, his production, of course, went up. It's a second goal. Great. Final time goes it away. Again, was back in the direction of Hogan. He did get knocked down by Tuit. Yeah, you got to be careful. Scores 33-9. Protect yourself. Boy, to it, that's a big hit from behind. Tom Brady didn't feel it. Didn't feel the rusher. I'm, that's what I mean. Well, Matt Ryan threw for four touchdowns earlier today. Brady could get number four right here. Of course, Ryan also ran for one. And draws a flag. Pre snap. Ball start. Offense number 88. Five yard penalty. Third down. The nod to McCauley and his crew have done a fine job here tonight. I just misheard him on that. Third quarter, what we thought was a fumble by Brady. He was just reciting Tomlin's view right. of a recovery. My bad. Third and goal. Again, he's got time. Slides, looks on the run and drag down. That's the rookie Sean Davis coming up. Brady getting hit a couple of times yeah, here. That was Looking, he bent over, just picking up his towel that he has in his pants, but nobody open. Three-man rush, and finally Sean Davis comes out of the secondary to make the tackle. So they'll go with Diskowski from 26 yards. There's a Brady champ. Echoes around Jackson. is good. 36 to 9. New England outscoring him 19-0 in the second half.
Again earlier today, Larry Fitzgerald, Eli Manning, Greg Olson announced as this year's finalist for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide for their commitment to upholding high standards both as players and as humanitarians. The award recognizing players who have made a significant impact on both the game and in their communities. The winner will be announced at NFL Honors February 4th, 8 Eastern on Fox. Wow, look at Alan Brands can yeah. stop the run and he can. Hey, all week long, they were telling yes. about, can you stop Le'Veon Bell? And didn't have to deal with Bell for very long. That's right. But they didn't allow D'Angelo Williams to do much either, 14 for 34. Branch is 6'6", 360, so. Edelman over 100, Hogan over 100. In fact, an all-time postseason franchise mark for Hogan, won the 80. Just Most by a duo. Well, let's watch Next Gen Stats. Let's just talk about Alec Branch. 18 run plays he was in there on tonight. 18. Look at him holding up, pouncy, and he had 1.9 yards per rush when he was in there. And that's that tells you a big story about this game. They could not block the big guys inside for the Patriots. Alan Branch, the biggest one of all. James just steps out. Does not challenge Ryan for another yard. Well, the Steelers, they thought everything was in sync after they figured things out, sorted things out after that speed bump in the middle of the, of the season. Coming in nine straight wins. Never thought they could be dominated like this, that team. That's what they were thinking. They thought the stars were aligned. Sperger clicks it, got a first down. That's Williams. Well, a lot of them were, Jim. To get to the conference final, you got to do a lot of things well. But the Steelers, I think, this offseason when it comes, they have to rethink, you know, this Patriots team is just not going to dismantle during this offseason. Nope. And you got to think about the best teams. They're, they they want to win Super Bowls in Pittsburgh. They're not worried about winning the division. They think big. Again, he's taking the underneath stuff. As I go back to Williams for six. And if you want to play the style of defense they're playing, it just is, hey, Tom Brady. Coming into the game, the last six times he played Pittsburgh, the same defense, the same calls, 19 touchdowns, zero interceptions. I can't even believe those numbers when I say them. I even when I read them. Over the head, and Rodgers. I actually had these numbers. I had to ask three people, are you sure that's right? <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> go back to Go back and look at that, because it just. Tom Spencer and Ethan Cooperson double check that. It cannot be. doesn't sound right. They had to at least have one tip pass or something go wrong in those six games. But Tom Brady, you know, the meticulous game planner, and now he's taking it to another level, just the way he takes care of himself physically. His arm is absolutely as good now as it was his rookie year. It's better than it was his rookie year. Third and three. And that's Brown. Nice catch. As it was. He reached up to get that one. To think that Brady, though, is going back to another Super Bowl and the chance to break out of that four-title tie that he has with Montana and Bradshaw mm. for the most by any quarterback of all time. You know, the other thing that amazes me real quick, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, all the success 17 years together that they survived. Rogers. There he is. Big hit. Knocked down by McCourty. Just by that, you mean just get some sort of friction or battle of egos or something no, to the surface? Yep. The yeah, you know, it's it, what, Tom Brady had the greatest line. And I was asking that. No friction. How do you, all these years of success, usually somebody gets mad and it blows up. He goes, he's the coach, I'm the player. And when you keep those lines clear, then you don't have those problems. Pittsburgh and no great rush here. As Roethlisberger escapes. And now, unable to get it into the hands of Coates. This, by the way, is the tally coming in. 206. 
soon to be one more. Brady, <laughs> it's going to be his 24th win. And speaking of all this uh, Super Bowl record making, you got Belichick who's going to break out of the tie with Shula for the most teams that a coach has taken to the Super Bowl. He and Shula had six each. Belichick on his way to number seven. As Williams goes out of bounds. Most wins all time in the postseason. Already had that mark. Tom Landry and 20. And Belichick on his way to number seven. And tied with Chuck Knoll for the most wins. Going for number five down in Houston. There's Roethlisberger, got a man open, and it is caught for the touchdown by Hamilton. Really good design play, beautiful throw by Ben Roethlisberger down the right sideline. Eli Rogers goes in the middle. That little fake draws the safety to Ron Harmon. That was enough. And Roethlisberger threw it to the back corner for the touchdown. And a couple beautiful throws in between the coverage here. Makes the game look better, and they're going to go for two. Boy, Ben Roethlisberger's thrown a lot of good passes tonight. Went on the money, had that one interception. Timeout called here by New England. Well, let's look at that last touchdown. You see Eli Rogers in the middle of the three receivers. He bends it in. That catches the safety's attention. And Kobe Hamilton. The speed outside and the perfect throw. Roethlisberger with a 300-yard game now, thanks to that touchdown pass. That's the Steelers' record moving past number 12. Well, as we saw here tonight, game's not over. Not saying it is, but Antonio Brown, when he was double teamed, was not a factor in the offense and. Kind of, if it does happen, they win this game to Patriots. I would say a guy named Julio Jones might see a double team a lot, don't you think? Mm. You better believe it. What a performance by Julio in that Falcon victory. Particularly the long one that he broke, shoving aside a few defenders. Going for two. And getting the man free, it's Williams. To make the margin now. 19. Everybody covered the same guy. Nobody covered Williams going out into the flat. Can they find what? They need two touchdowns, two twos, and a field goal. That's all. Three and a half minutes to go. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Fist Fight in theaters February 17th. And by AT&T. Being a little tongue-in-cheek going to the break there about all that the Steelers need to do, but they've just put together a 75-yard drive. Only 3.36 remaining as they set up now for the onside kick. Tomlin talking about this spirit, this playfulness, this looseness of this team that really helped get their season back in gear after it looked lost in part of October. Ball is out of bounds. And Amendola may have helped it get out. Oh, he did. He jumped up. I don't know if he got it. He was trying to. Oh, he hit it. We saw Hayward Bay trying to slip down the sideline and trying to be in position. Please set the game clock to three minutes, 35 seconds. The ball was legally touched from the field of play. Legal play, says McCauley, and now New England has it at the 48. 
mattered. I thought that could be illegal batting of the football by slapping out of bounds like that. Reedy stays in the game. And since it went backwards, it's not a penalty. Blunt. Chazier is there to meet him. So, Patriots well on their way to Houston, and they are the last team to win a Super Bowl that was played in Houston. And Mike Vrabel caught a touchdown there. It was a wild one, too, against Carolina. Ricky Kroll, they got back and tied it in the late going, and then Adam Vinatieri won it. it was Super Bowl 38. Yep, that was a terrific game, you know, until you know you watch this team here tonight. What's the difference watching this team compared to the one we saw in Denver last year? Hey, to me, the offensive line. So much better this year than last year. And he's taken down at the 43-yard line. By the way, former President Bush, 41, and Mrs. Bush were at that game. Down at Houston, Down at yes. Houston. I know everyone's been aware that uh, both President and Mrs. Bush have been in the hospital this past week at Houston Methodist Hospital. I can tell you that Mrs. Bush is going home tomorrow and that President Bush is hopeful to get out of ICU tomorrow. He's been battling pneumonia. And I can also tell you that 41 is well aware that the Super Bowl is two weeks away. He is very proud of the McNairs who will be the host owners there, the Texans organization in the city of Houston. He's a goal-oriented man, and everyone on his staff will tell you that he's going to do everything he can to continue to get better and try to be able to attend some events. Or at least one of them that they wish him well. I'm so happy to hear that they both have recovered so nicely. And that's a little update on that situation. Yeah, very well said. We wish him well. Hope you enjoyed the game here tonight. Mm -hmm. This, this, go back here. Just what an improvement this offensive line switched around. Marcus Cannon, the right tackle, and Shaq Mason, the right guard, have made such an improvement over last year. And, then, of course, that all goes with coaching. Dante Skarnecchia came back as the offensive line coach. That never hurts when you get one of the best offensive line coaches and maybe in history to come back and help you out. That was a big, big get for him to return. And we've got the two-minute warning. And there he is. Coach Dante right there. Coming up, the Subway Post Game Show. JB, Tony, Bart Boomer, Coach Coward back in New York. Their thoughts on this New England victory, plus the presentation of the Lamar Hunt Trophy. Down on the field. So... Well, the AFC quarterbacks in the Super Bowl been dominated here over this stretch by three guys. Brady, it's going to be number seven now. It's going to be 14 out of 16 Super Bowls have been manned by either Brady, Manning, or Roethlisberger. Ran of a 39-year-old quarterback in the Super Bowl for a second straight year. Well, everybody talks about his motivation. Is it more this year than any year in the past? And you know what I say about Tom Brady? They talk about the chip on his shoulder. He didn't, it didn't, it's been there his whole life. You know, that's the kind of player he is. Again, the Subway Post Game Show is coming up. And we're going to be hearing from Tom Brady, Coach Belichick. The Lamar Hunt Trophy is going to be presented to the organization by their honorary captain, Teddy Bruschi, is now Belichick. And his staff start to celebrate. In our chat with, with Tom, you know, we're trying to figure out, is there any extra motivation this year? Did he have any thoughts of a revenge? You know, the revenge tour was kind of last year, even yes. though he served the suspension at the start of this year. He said, you know, I just want to win. That's what he said. I've moved on. There's no thought of revenge, That's what Tom said on Friday. Well, they got a really good football team. No glaring weakness of the Patriots, that's for sure. It's going to take a great game by Atlanta to, to beat this team. It's excited to be heading back to another Super Bowl. His parents, Galen and Tom, who are watching at home in California, they're going to be with them down in Houston. And I, I get to Belichick, too. It's rare for him to, to kind of go this far, but to tell us, this week, this is a special team, and I'd like to see them get to the Super Bowl. 
because there's a lot of guys who weren't a part of the team that won it two years ago. In fact, 30 of the 53 yeah. on the roster I, I were believe... not a part of that team. He says they've been tough. Right. Uh, they're not selfish. They've trained hard, and they're rewarded. You said it. You said it all. They're tough. They're not selfish. They know their role. They play their role, and they don't complain. It is terrific to watch them practice, to talk to them. You see it. You hear it. And they show it on the field. Bill and his lady, Linda. Tracy, down to you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, Tom. A career postseason high for you, 384 yards, three touchdowns. But what can you say about your offensive line and just how your wide receivers were able to get so open, especially Chris Hogan? They play great. At first, I want to say hi to my beautiful mom at home and my dad. I love you so much. I love you. Um, my sisters, I love you too. My beautiful wife's here so and my kids. Um, so, yeah, what was your question? I can just see how emotional you are right now. And you told us you gave it your all last year and fell short. To be able yeah. to have the opportunity to get back to the Super Bowl, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, it's incredible. This team showed a lot of uh, mental toughness over the course of the year. And um, it was a great win tonight. Uh, our fans are going crazy. So uh, I'm just happy for our team. Uh, we put a lot into it. And I know we're going to play a great team in a couple weeks. but. Uh, be great to finish it off. Congratulations and good luck. Thanks so Thank much. You. Brady has 4 0 all time against Atlanta with nine touchdowns and only one interception. They've got some former Patriot guys and Belichick disciples that are there at Atlanta. Thomas Dimitrov. Thomas Dimitrov, the general manager, Scott Pioli, yep. the assistant general manager, both were up here with the Patriots at one time. How about that matchup, though? Ryan and Brady. Super Bowl 51 is all set in Houston. The AFC champions are the New England Patriots. We're heading down to the field to give them the Lamar Hunt Trophy. And you're watching the NFL on CBS.